Now, when Phase 2 launches, it's going to bring some incredible challenges, some incredible new loot, and ultimately some really, really cool boss fights. One of those bosses in particular is going to need a lot of work from you and your guild to be able to get all of the requirements done to be able to even summon him. And assuming there's no changes, when you do summon him, you're only going to have one hour to be able to kill him. If you can't get him down in one hour, well, it's going back next week. I'm sure by now you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Algalon the Observer. Now, it's not really summoning Algalon. It's opening the door that he sat behind. And to be able to open the door, you need the key. Because that's how doors that are locked work. But to get the raid clear, that really does include Algalon. And to kill him week one means you need to be able to down five different hard mode bosses. Now, technically, you only need to kill four because actually to get the key, which we're going to talk about in just a second, you can do the medium mode. So Iron Council in particular has got three difficulties, basically easy, medium and hard, if you like. And the medium and the hard difficulties, you can get the item that you need. So the hardest of all the difficulties is the one that's actually part of Glory of the Old War Raider 25, which is I Choose You Steelbreaker. Now, this is to make sure Steelbreaker is the last one that you kill. I wouldn't say the difficulty is massively different between I Choose You Steelbreaker and I Choose You Rune Master Mulgheim. So this is to leave the medium sized mob alive until last. It's the one that drops all the horrible toxic pools on the floor, but also does give some nice buffs. But either way, you need to make your way to Iron Council. You need to kill either Steelbreaker last or Rune Master Mulgheim last, and then he will drop an Archivum data disc. This disc can only be looted by one person, which probably is going to end up being your raid leader or your main tank for the first week. When you right click on it in your inventory, it will then give you a quest, which is basically going to send you directly behind the Iron Council to the Archivum console. This console plays a, a slightly bigger part in Alduar. It's You need to use the console to be able to make Valinir. You need to be able to use the console to be able to summon Algalon. You know, it's sort of the thing that you go to for the Alduar quests. Now, you'll have some nice RP that goes on, which talks you through all of the Keepers and who the Keepers are, and basically that you need to go and kill them. It is actually quite a comical piece of RP, so I would recommend watching it. But after the RP finishes, you'll be able to get a quest from Prospector Lauren, which is called the Celestial Planetarium. Now, this is to go and locate the planetarium, which if you run directly out where you came from, and instead of turning left to go up to the stairs to Colagon, you carry on going round. When you get to the very end, there'll be a couple of mobs that you need to kill along the way. But when you're at the end, that's Algalon's door. And you'll see a small console next to it, which is what you use the key on to then activate the door. Obviously, at the moment, you haven't got the key. So you're going to go back to Prospector Lauren to hand the quest in to say, yes, I found the Celestial Planetarium. And on you go. You'll now get four individual quests, which is quite nice that it's broken down into four instead of one big quest. Because if you're stuck on two or three hard modes down, and you've got to keep these in your inventory or in your bank taking up space, that would be quite annoying. Instead, you get four individual quests to kill all four keepers on hard mode. So for Freya, you've got to do knock, knock, knock on wood, which is to kill Freya without killing any of the three guardians beforehand. And this will place a few buffs on Freya, increasing spell damage, increasing physical damage. And each of these elders that remain alive will give a buff to Freya. Not only to Freya, also to all the adds that Freya has spawn in pretty much all the way through the fight as well so bright leaf is going to give 60 percent nature damage to her and her allies as well as being able to use solar flare which is a big nuke that will hit multiple targets elder stonebark is going to increase physical damage dealt by freya and freya will also get a ground tremor which is a two second cast aoe which does physical damage and interrupts spell cast and finally elder iron branch will increase physical damage dealt by allies of nature by 50 percent and freya also gains the ability to cast iron roots which is a single target root with a very very large dot and you can basically nuke the roots to free people or you can use things like hand of freedom which is very nice so as you see like i said not only is freya getting buffed the allies are getting buffed as well when you're doing it with all three keepers alive not keepers they're called elders but once you've got freya down you can loot the sigil and now you're one quest closer to being able to summon algalon of course you're going to need all the other keepers as well so hodir is basically just a speed kill as long as you've got high dps and you manage the buffs and debuffs that the raid can get it's not one of the more difficult hard modes. Orim, again, is pretty much a race. Your raid will split into two groups. You'll have one tunnel group and one arena group. As long as the arena group can keep on top of all the adds while the tunnel group clears it quick enough for Sif to then join the fight with you as well, then you'll pretty much be able to do Thorim as normal, apart from you've got Sif, who's aiding him, firing frostbolts, 
putting blizzards down it's not a particularly difficult hard mode but then mimiron is not a particularly forgiving hard mode so again i would put mimiron up there with freya in terms of difficulty i would actually say freya is a little bit more difficult i think it's a bit more of a hectic fight even though you guys will probably say mimiron is a bit more of a hectic fight ultimately as long as you've got 25 people that know what they're doing mimiron and freya are both mechanically challenging more so than gear dependent or massive requirements of dps but once you've killed all four of these keepers and got the sigils you can then go back and hand in and you'll get the quest algalon at which point you hand the four sigils in to prospector lauren and you'll get a follow-up quest which will reward you with the key to actually be able to summon algalon and a large sack of Alduar spoils. And to hand this in, all you simply need to do is speak to the console and you're done. Just a nice little extra to actually get in the key, I suppose, but getting a guaranteed pattern, especially in week one, pretty cool. Then you can just run back round to where the console is, where Algalon's door is. You can speak to the console because you now have the key. You'll get some nice RP going on with Bram Bronzebeard and a really nice animation as the door opens, letting you into the Celestial Planetarium. Kill Algalon, get some loot. If only it was as easy as just saying, kill Algalon. Good luck progressing. He is a good fight. It's a hard fight. He's got a lot of health, a lot of mechanics going on. I'm sure you'll do it though. But if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you're a member when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.